All right, let's get going. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another exciting morning of Chem 1211 with your host, me, Dr. White. Now, so I don't forget, so I better do it now, because if I don't, I will forget. I'd like to wish all of you, don't forget, next week is spring break. I'd like to wish all of you either a happy Easter, a happy Passover, which I celebrate, or if you don't celebrate those because you're a different religion or not a religion, happy whatever. And if you don't like to be happy, we'll still be happy. That's a command from Dr. White. Oh, happy Greek Independence Day. In chemistry, organic chemistry, we use a Greek word, very important, chiral, which means handedness. Actually, I had two Greek students years ago who told me, yes, it is Greek. All right, let's go through some important things and not so important things. First of all, don't forget by 1 p.m. today, make sure you upload test number two. I'll stay a little afterward lab today because it's a quick lab. Oh no, no tea. But I'll stick around if you have any questions. All right, now, one of the things I forgot to do this semester is I've noticed over the last couple of years, because of a generation gap, if you have noticed, I'm a little older than most of you. <laughs> is that an understatement of the year? But anyways, because of that, I've realized a lot of you don't know about A, good music, I mean, really good music, B, good movies, and C, good books. So how can I correct that, help you out? Well, one of the things that made me late this morning, everybody see Blackboard? All right. If you look over here, there's a new thing. Dr. White's favorite music, movies, and books. And if we open it up, there are two files. One's a doc, the other's a PDF. And... It has my favorite stuff. A couple you might not know, Del Shannon Runaway, that's a great one. Iron Butterfly, I saw them live into God of the Vita and I saw them play that. Uh, Jefferson Airplane, I saw them with Gracie Slick. One of my all time favorites is Go Ask Alice. If you, that's in YouTube. I saw Jimi Hendrix live. I saw him do Fire. And these purple haze, there are a few I didn't include here because otherwise the list would be, I do like um, Manic Depression by Jimi Hendrix. I saw him do that. Led Zeppelin, I saw them live in a bar in Chicago when they were practicing before they had their big concert. I also have a very wide taste of music. If you don't know about Lester, Flat and Earl Scruggs, boy, you're missing some good country music. And Foggy Mountain Breakdown and their famous one, Ballad of Jed Clampett, Clampett from the Beverly Hillbillies TV show. And I do like Metallica, Nothing Else Matters, that I love that song. I saw the Moody Blues play twice in Chicago. Here's some there are more I like. Now here's one from my childhood. Most of you don't know about Nervous Norvis. And you can find these both on YouTube. And I listened to them last night when I was making, uh, adding to this list. And <laughs> I still love them. Those are back from the 1950s. Uh, I think most of you know Roy Orbison, Pretty Woman. Uh, uh, here's a favorite of mine by the Chantays. I think that's how you pronounce it. Pipeline. That's on YouTube. Cream I Love. Uh, most of you aren't familiar with Press Strat and Wire Dog. Play it. It's on YouTube. A uh, couple of my all-time favorites. The Electric Prunes had only one hit, and this was it, and it's on YouTube. The Yardbirds are my all-time, all-time favorite besides Jimi Hendrix. My two favorite songs in the world, three possibly. Number one, Fire. There's not a better song by Jimi Hendrix. Number two, Yardbird Shakes the Things. And also, Mr. You're a Better Man Than I. There's another one, Train Kept Rolling. 
I didn't put down there. I should have Smokestack Lightning. Those are all on YouTube, but I have actually the original albums, 33 and a half of that. I also have a CD uh, of the music. Now, when it comes to movies, I could have made this a lot longer, but most of you probably have never seen Blazing Saddles. That's probably the most funniest movie in the world. And the second most funniest is Duck Soup by the Marx Brothers. If you haven't seen that, I think parts of it are on YouTube. Most of these you can get. I've seen some of you are agreeing. Now, in this movie list, my all-time, all-time favorite, which I can probably do every line in the movie by heart, is Forbidden Planet. Science fiction movie, first time I saw it, I think I was about eight years old, and I fell in love with it. And I don't know if you can see, see the picture right up there? That's picture from one of the scenes, my favorite scene in Forbidden Planet. Yes, I do love it. And some of them you may not be familiar with, all the Star Wars you are, but Seven Samurai is a Japanese film that the Magnificent Seven was based on. It's, it's really interesting. Uh, Another one on here, the original Time Machine is one of my favorite. And these are all good films, what can I say? There are a few I don't have on here I should include. If you've never seen Das Boot, the German version, uh, I speak German so I understand it. It's an awesome film about a German World War II submarine crew. And Dr. White loves his Kung Fu movies. Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. This is a famous one you don't know, The Five Fingers of Death. And my favorite Bond movie, I don't know, Goldfinger, I think from Russia with Love. Sean Connery was the best James Bond. Uh, some of the others were, how should I say, awful. The current James Bond, he just doesn't look like a James Bond to me. Well, anyways, I thought I'd share that with you. And this whole list is available again on Dr. White's favorite music, movies, and books. It's my, how should I say, pleasure to introduce you some good stuff that you probably aren't familiar with. But you should see Duck Soup and Blazing Saddles, but for sure see Forbidden Planet. Most libraries have a copy of it. You can check out for a DVD or I don't know if they have Blu-ray. I have three different copies of that. I didn't put down, what is it? Um, something Tiger, something Dragon or whatever. That's the Chinese, I, that was a favorite. But anyways, and I don't have on here, which I'll have to include this semester, favorite TV shows like Babylon 5 uh, and a few others, uh, the Vikings on the History Channel. So anyways, I thought I'd, educate you non-chemistry and some of the good things in life you're probably missing. All right. Now, today, normally we would do a problem set now. And if we were at COD face-to-face, -face, we do the same thing, but no, you have a test. If it were face-to-face, -face, you would have had it yesterday. You have a lab and I wouldn't do a problem set. And therefore, we're just going to do the lab today. Today's lab was a lot of fun. Oh no, no tea still. Am I going through withdrawal symptoms? No, actually, when I used to drink a lot more, I cut back. I did have some uh, nicotine withdrawal, uh, not nicotine, caffeine withdrawal symptoms. Uh, I was, and I got through that. I used to drink about eight or 10 mugs a day when I worked full time and I cut back to three or four and now I'm just two. But anyways, let's talk about today's lab. Now, first of all, remember, Sunday is the deadline for the lab that's due today. After that, you get zero points. Don't forget to hand it in. They're easy points. 
you miss a lot of labs, that's going to really hurt your lab or your final grade. So please hand in today's lab. If you have any questions, ask after lab or email me. Uh, uh, speaking about email and after lab, uh, next week is spring break for COD, no classes. The lab we're doing today is not due next Thursday. It's doing due two weeks from today because next week you have no school. However, because I'm teaching at the other school, I will be having my office hours. So once you get the test number two score, if you have any questions about that, I still will go through a week from this Monday when we come back all the answers. But if you need help with anything, next week, stop by my office hours at night. I'll be available. All right. Today's lab deals with the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law, as you all know, is PV equal NRT. Thumbs up, people. You see the uh, whiteboard? Where P is pressure. in atmospheres, V is volume, in liters, N is moles, in moles, <laughs> all right, that was easy. R is the universal gas law constant, which we use for the units we're using, 0 0.0821 atmospheres, liters, mole, K, and finally T is temperature. And Kelvin. Now, this is a law, the ideal gas law, and a law means it's always true. Well, the question is, am I lying to you? How do you know? Maybe it's not true, and I'm lying to you. Well, that's an important part of science and especially chemistry. When you have something and they say this is true, how do you prove it? You go into the lab and prove it's true. And everything I teach you this semester or anything you learn about chemistry that's out there, someone, more than someone, a lot of people have gone into lab, oh no, no tea still, and proved it. Well, that's what you're going to do today. Today's lab, you're going to find out, is Dr. White lying to you? Is PV equal NRT a law really true? How do you do that? Well, let's take a look. Everybody see ideal gas law on your screen? Thank you. All right. Now, as you know, a very important law, this is probably my favorite uh, mathematical equation in chemistry. Chemical equations in organic are my favorite, but I don't teach that this semester, unfortunately. But anyways, oops, I got to do something. Hang in there. That gets rid of all the squiggly lines because word doesn't like chemistry. So here's PV equal NRT. And chemistry in a lab is a uh, law is always true. In today's lab, you'll determine is this ideal gas law true? How? Well, by doing a chemical reaction and determining the volume of a gas form at a certain temperature and pressure. And once you get the volume of that gas at that certain temperature and pressure, you can determine the moles of that gas. And for this lab, what you would be doing if we were at COD, and I'm going to, I've added another part too, which is going to be really exciting for you. For this lab, you'll be using the following balance of chemical equation. And that is magnesium reacting with two moles, one mole of magnesium reacting with two moles of hydrochloric acid, HCl is hydrochloric acid, makes one mole of magnesium chloride and one mole of hydrogen gas. 
Now, you'll be able to weigh out the amount of magnesium. Well, it's a solid, it's an element, and you can calculate the moles by the atomic the weight of magnesium divided by the atomic weight of magnesium. And once you collect the uh, gas, you can determine what N is. And the moles of N here should equal the moles of magnesium if PV equal NRT is true. Now, important thing when I say equal. When I say equal, if you get a number 0 0.157 for moles of magnesium, and from the hydrogen, you get 0 0.14 or 135, those in my book are equal. You're not going to get the exact number. No way. If you're working in real life in lab, it won't happen. But you're going to be with an experimental error close. And don't forget, you're not using tens of thousands of dollars of equipment if you were in the lab. Now, Let's go through what you're going to be doing. Now, let's look at the following video. Grammarly is your personal writing assistant for clear emails, confident messages, stronger essays, and more. First thing you do in the experiment is measure the mass of the magnesium strip. There's an alternate way to do this that gives you more significant figures like in the description. This. But for this particular experiment, we're really not going. First thing you do in the experiment is measure the mass of the All right, thumbs up, people. You see YouTube. Thank you. Let me make it large screen. First thing you do in the experiment is measure the mass of the magnesium strip. There's an alternate way to do this that gives you more significant figures that's in the description. But for this particular experiment, we're really not going for intense precision anyways. You should. In this place, you need to kind of use a piece of copper wire and you're going to put that through your one hole rubber stopper so that it can kind of move in and out, but it's going to be stuck. And then you're going to put the magnesium in with the copper, but you need it to be held in place because if it gets released during the middle of the experiment, it'll float up to the top and it won't fully react. And so this can be pretty challenging. You have to be careful because you don't want to get a splinter from the magnesium and that also it can be hard to position the thing correctly where it's actually stuck in there pretty well. Usually, if you get some coils, you can kind of press the copper together. Uh, and if you're having trouble like I am right here, one of the things that you can do is you can grab a pair of pliers and use that to really lock the thing into place. Just kind of give that a squeeze, and that'll hopefully hold it where it's not going to, as the bubbles go, rise to the top. Now let's go ahead and look at the udiometer. So the udiometer is open on one end and closed on the other. You want to pour your hydrochloric acid in, about 10 milliliters, and you want to use somewhere 3 molar to 6 molar hydrochloric. And it's also really important that you add food coloring to the hydrochloric acid so you can see it as you're doing the reaction. So I added blue food coloring, and the hydrochloric acid turned that into yellow somehow. So this has had a little bit of red added to give us an orangish color. And then you're going to pour just regular tap water in. And you want to pour it in where you pour it very slowly. And so to do that, you need to tip the udiometer because what you don't want to do is you don't want the water and the hydrochloric acid to mix very much. You want it to kind of run down the side and form layers. And at the beginning, that's not going to work well, and that's fine. But by the point you get to midway up the udiometer, that's going to change where it's going to fill mostly with water. You can kind of see the color change as it gets higher and higher up. So 
it was a little short on water. So now we're gonna add just a little bit and we're gonna fill it all the way to the top so it's gonna flood over, but it's not the hydrochloric acid at the top because it hasn't had a chance to mix evenly. And so we're just gonna let the water flood out of the top. And we're gonna seal that with our one hole stopper with a copper wire and the magnesium sealed in the top. We have the hydrochloric acid at the bottom, water at the top with the stopper. And we're now gonna flip that upside down and as the hydrochloric acid, you can see that red color kind of moving down towards the magnesium. And what happens is as the hydrochloric acid slowly mixes, it ends up reaching the point where it gets to the magnesium. And when that happens, you start to see bubbles. And so as those bubbles go to the top, it pushes the hydrochloric acid mixture even further down and the reaction continues to happen. And since you have an excess of hydrochloric acid, you can see this is going to actually start to react faster and faster. So right now we're at the beginning, you can see a little tiny bit of bubbling where the magnesium ribbon is. But that Those bubbles, bubbles are hydrochloric acid. I mean, that red color shift that. down towards the bottom. So now we're gonna go ahead and speed up the video so this doesn't take so long because it's a long stretch for this reaction to happen here. But we're gonna flip back and forth where you can see the bubbling and you can see what's going on at the top as the bubbles push that water and hydrochloric acid as that gas is collecting. This usually takes about 10 minutes when you do it in the lab. Again, those bubbles are hydrogen gas, H2. The reaction has slowed considerably. We're not quite done yet, but now if we take a glimpse of where we are, we can start to see if we're getting to the end. So currently we're between 62 and 64. It looks like we're right around 63 milliliters right now. So we're gonna let this react a little more and see if that changes. Against the backdrop, it looks like it's just not quite to 64. So 21.5 degrees. You measure the temperature of the water, which gives you the temperature of the gas in there. And that's how you do the slab. Now, here's the procedure we would do it. We don't use the stopper We've changed that, but I wrote it like it was on the video. And things they didn't, you saw at the end, you'd measure the volume of the initial volume of the burette. We use a burette instead of one of those ediometers or whatever it's called. It's the same thing, except it's got a valve on top you close. Now, what do you do? <clears throat> I'm giving you the initial data. First of all, let me check. Everybody see the lab? Thank you. All right. You see the initial, here's the weight of the magnesium you've used. When we do it, we do two runs, but I'm only having you do calculations for one. Here's the initial volume of the water in the burette after you react the magnesium with the HCl. Here's the final volume. The difference is the volume of the gas collected, three minus two. Now I give you the temperature of the room, which is the temperature of the hydrogen and the pressure in the room. We do have barometers in the room that we use and that's in TOR. 
Now, calculations. Moles of magnesium, you take the weight of the magnesium the times one mole per the atomic weight equals the moles of magnesium. And so you can calculate number three divided by, or actually number one divided by the atomic weight of magnesium. Now, calculate the theoretical. Well, theoretical, whatever you get here, theoretical would be the same because in the balanced chemical equation, one mole of magnesium makes one mole of hydrogen gas. Now, the next steps, um, showing you, first of all, you got to convert the temperature up here into Kelvin for PV equal and RT. And I give you a little hint there. Next, you have to convert the pressure in TOR to atmospheres. And we've done that. And I remind you, 760 TOR equals one atmosphere. And the temperature in Kelvin here is the same temperature that Kelvin of the gas. So number nine is the same as number seven. And finally, pressure of the hydrogen atmospheres, that's the same as number eight. And because we measured in milliliters, the volume of the gas in liters is number four, way up here, this number right here divided by a thousand. And now you can use PV equal NRT to determine the moles of gas, hydrogen. And that you use these numbers for pressure, volume, temperature, and you'll get a value for moles of hydrogen from PV equal NRT. And this number eight, if you did it correctly, should be the same number as number six. So answer for question, uh, calculation two should be the same as number eight. And I think you all know how I did it yesterday, how to solve for N when you use PV equal NRT. Now that's the first part. Now the second part is we you paid for Lapster. So, not labs or beyond lab Z. And therefore, let's use it. Now they have a way of, uh, I'm working with, uh, hopefully I'll be working with beyond lab Z, but uh, their gas lab is interesting, but it leaves a little to be desired, but still works, maybe. And you're gonna find out, does it really work? How? Well, you're going to use their data and see if their gauges are correct. Let's go to, hold on while I do this. We don't need this. Hang in there while I'm opening up. Now, can everybody see beyond lab Z on the screen? Hold on. Yep, you should. You see beyond lab Z? Thank you. Now open up the chemistry lab. Then at the top where it says gases, click on that. And this is in the instructions I give you. Everybody see 
the gas lab with the tanks over here. All right. Now, today's lab, you need from the lab here, you click on this, then over here where it says balloon, you click on this black above, and then see where it says exit. Again, I clicked on the black switch, which said balloon, now I'll exit. And now I have my thing where it has a balloon in there. Now, what I'd like you to use, see right over here where it says real gases, click on underneath, and this is in the instructions, ideal gases. Let's use ideal gas number six, and you click on that. Now, this is a regulator, which most of you have never seen, on top of a gas tank. And Dr. White's worked with many of these. And this one, you normally turn this handle, but they give you this, I guess it's orange color or brown color. Click on it, see how it turns this? Click on it again, click on it until this gauge reads, and that's 400 PSIG, pounds per square inch gauge. Now, watch over here. I'm gonna fill the balloon by opening the valve. Oh, let's, and I'll click on it now to stop. Now I'm going to click on this box and you can see this. Now you got to get things in the right units. For volume, I want liters. So I clicked until I got liters. For pressure, let's do atmospheres. For temperature, it's Kelvin and moles you already have. Now, what you'll do is, hold on, I see a question. You see it now, Biliana? Have you been following me? And this will be in the video I'll post later today. Now, these values right now record. And here I have, let me do something real quick. Thumbs up, people. Do you see the procedure on your screen? Thank you. All right. This I what I just did, I showed you how to do on the lab, on beyond lab Z. And what I just did, look at the gauges and record them right here. Volume, pressure, temperature, and moles. That I'm calling run one. Now to do run two raise the temperature and just a little, not a lot, or raise the temperature 100 degrees C. So let's go back there. Everybody see the balloon? All right, how do you raise the temperature? There's a knob here. Let's go to Calvin to centigrade. We're at 24.85. Let's go to about 124. Watch what happens to the balloon. Actually, you can go and raise it that way. Or you can actually type in. Yeah, let's go cut a little more. And it got bigger. And notice some of these uh, things change. Temperature change. And again, write these numbers down from the gauge. in run number two. And what you'll do is you'll use PV equal NRT, hint, use PV divided by RT from run one and run two to determine how many moles of the gas you'd actually have using the ideal gas law. And then from table one, you'll put in this number and see if they're about the same. And that's that. Now I have one more thing. I'm going to steal your fun, but you can go back and do it. Raise it another 200 degrees and see what happens. Everybody see the balloon? All right, quick way to raise it faster is just click on there. Watch what happens. It gets bigger. Ooh, let's even go more. Isn't that great? 
And if you want, you can reset, fill it up with gas and blow it up again. I figured you'd have a good time. See, chemistry can have fun. And then, you know, I have some questions you have to answer. And that's today's lab. Oh my God, it's only 9.30. But anyways, like I said, today, if we were in the lab for sure, I'd discuss what I just showed you. I could show like you saw in the video, I can teach you how to do that. And we have a better way of holding the magnesium with thread and it works a lot easier. But you do the same thing. It takes me about 20 minutes to show you all that. It takes you about, oh, 30, 40 minutes to do it, and you'd be out about the same time. So you're getting your money's worth today, Dr. White. Oh no, no tea still. This will go down history as the tea list lab. But, oh, that was awful. But anyways, uh, I'm done. Oh wait, so you feel like you're not cheated. I'm really done. And with that, I'm gonna say, have a happy spring break. If you're celebrating religious holidays that are over spring break, have a happy religious holiday. If that's not your religion, still have a happy spring break. And I'll stick around if anybody has any last minute questions. And with that, I'm going to do my world famous goodbye. Goodbye. No, you know that. Oh, I did that yesterday. Ooh, deja vu all over again. Gang gesund. Goodbye. And I'll see you in a week. And good news. You won't have to deal with Dr. White for over a week. Don't forget to check out my favorites. And Thank you so much, doctor. You have a good one as well. Make sure you rest up and relax as well. I will. Actually, I got a great test. I should say the test should be in the blackboard. Like I said yesterday, the latest Sunday, I'm shooting for Saturday, maybe even earlier. All right. Well, in that case, goodbye. Gang gesund.